All right, a whole bunch of new Anthem software just came out. Let's take a look at all the upgrades and, and updates and new capabilities and such that came with it. So it looks like the AVM 90s release is impending. Anthem updated their webpage. There's a whole bunch of new information. Awesome details, the HDMI 2.1 boards are coming and they look to be uh, full HDMI 2.1 across the board, all inputs, all outputs, and the webpage for the AVM90 even mentions it being 48 gig HDMI 2.1, which is sweet. I hope that that's the case, and I hope they deploy that same board across all the MRX and AVM models. But in preparation for that, we've got some new software. The AVM70 got a firmware update to version 1.108, up from the prior uh, 1.106 and Arc Genesis was updated as well to a version 1.6.1 up from version 1.5.4. And so with it primarily comes the ability for Genesis to measure and include in its calculations and filters and so on, auto distance calibration for your speakers and, and such, and phase integration with your speakers and subwoofers in that. And I think folks have been waiting this for a while. This is a feature, features that have been available in other um, acoustic calibration software but haven't been in ARC so I'm all updated and, and ready to take a look here in this video just as a little bit of a side note I had some trouble with the update so when when it was this was first released a couple days ago from recording this video I tried to do the update from the web UI of my AVM 70 it is a beta update so you have to have beta updates enabled but I kept getting no no firmware or no update available, no update available. And so I read around on a couple forums, the AVS forum and the Facebook users group for, for Anthem that, oh, well, to get these updates to apply, you need to use the uh, update option on the face of the unit itself. So I tried that. And while I think a number of folks have been successful having the beta update put on their system, I wasn't so lucky. And so my mine took kind of like a half an update. There's multiple elements of the AVM70, the different firmware pieces and such that all have their independent versions. And when I did the update, only two of them updated, the DSP and the LCD itself, but the web UI version didn't update the core, uh, the, the core elements in the main software version didn't update. And I was trying to redo it and redo it and redo it and it wouldn't go through. So a day and a half of Anthem support and I'm finally up to date uh, the way that I should be. So we tried a, a variety, they recommended trying a variety of things and whether it was an internet connection issue, which I didn't, I didn't think it was and, and it's not. But at the end, they just sent me the firmware update and some instructions to kind of go through the admin council of the AVM70 and directly apply the firmware update. That was good to go. So shout out to Anthem support. They solved the problem, got me, got me running and were very attentive and responsive as we were, we were working via email. Thank you for that. And now let's, let's take a look at a couple specific things updated web UI of the AVM70, it's, it's no different. So um, if there are any differences from 1106 to 1108 in the web UI itself, at least I haven't noticed them. It looks the same to me. I went through all the pages and I was looking at the different controls and that seems to be the same. So the, the stock configuration, the regular web UI control elements, there's not much of a reason to go over those. I did some deeper dives in prior videos that are here on the channel. So if you want to see a complete Anthem uh, UI like deep dive overview, I recommend just go kind of watch those other videos, particularly the 1.106 video, because that's that's the current state. That's the current state of what everything looks like and how all the controls work. All right, so I just did a base curve arc config on the system, and I liked a variety of things that I saw. One. They fixed the bugs of no test tones coming out. So every time I ran Arc Genesis before, I would potentially get no test tones from my mains or no test tones from my tops. I would have to play some music and put the preamp in this all channel stereo mode to get a sound signal to every speaker and then switch back over to Arc. This time I was able to go into quick measure, do some quick measures, go right into a full Arc Genesis measurement, calibration, etc. And I encountered no problem with test tone generation. Crossing my fingers, I hope that's the case. That's the way it should work. Huge quality of life improvement. Very happy to see that. Another thing that I saw this time is that it looked like some of the measurements were maybe running a little higher than they did in my system the first time. And so when it got to the subwoofers, I did it with the Arendals. It was indicating, oh, the sub's too loud. 
you need to turn it down even though the resulting number in quick measure wasn't really indicating that it's too loud. But like I've shown in some of my other videos, I have some really big like 35 hertz peaks and some pretty deep 50-ish hertz nulls. I don't want to turn my subwoofer down a lot because it's going to push that 50 hertz null way too low and then ARC isn't going to be able to compensate. It's easier for ARC to cut down the highs than it is to bring up the lows. And if you push those lows too low, then those nulls are just going to take over. But now, where before the software would block you, basically turn down the subwoofer or turn, turn it down or you're done, right? It won't go any further. Now there's an option to ignore. Thank you. That is awesome. So I can just let the, let the subwoofer go at its volume with its kind of bigger sweeps and let the software and the calculations and the filters take over. That, it, that is a great feature. That's going to come into uh, a lot of benefit actually going back and setting up another configuration with the Har bottle. So very much looking forward to that. So it does take longer to run a measurement now. Um, after doing the main uh, position one, main listing position in the room measurements, then it proceeds to do the distance, the relative distance calculations and such. So there's a whole nother round of test tones going across all the speakers and bouncing back and forth between some of them after you do measurement one. So basically uh, doing a five point measurement is the equivalent of a six point measurement in terms of time because there's now this extra one for the distances and such embedded in between. And so I, I, I did all that, ran through it, didn't notice too much else of a difference. Those were the main things that, um, that stood out to me. And then of course, after the, after the, the, everything's calculated and everything's set on the final page where you would upload to your, to your preamp or your receiver or whatnot is where you can launch into the automatic phase correction. So let's take a look at that, that part live. All right, so let's take a look at the new feature for automatic phase adjustment. Looks like you do this after the arc main run is complete. It did all my other measurements, including the distance. It gave you the opportunity to tweak your curves and adjust the setting. It calculated the filters. And then here at the review screen, I see this new control launch automatic phase adjustment. So if we click that, we see place your microphone at the primary listening position pointing towards the ceiling. I just went ahead back in there and done that. Now let's resume. Arc has finished optimizing the phase between your front channels and subwoofers and uploaded the settings to your audio device. So I guess this just happens automatically. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's take a quick look through the, the UI after having now done the Arc config and uploading. So we can see this, this looks the same in terms of referencing my Arc upload date was just just a little bit ago here. The name was the name of the file that I had saved that configuration to. Nothing really different here in the main zone or of course zone two. General, again, no differences and nothing changed with regards to that upload. So speakers is where we see some of the information. So the channel mapping, I set that of course in Genesis when I set things up. I've got my ARN base single profile. I didn't make a, a separate modification profile yet. Two subwoofers, no wides, and all of my other speakers enabled. So here's my distances. This is interesting. If I were to sit in my seat with my laser measure device and actually measure distance to my subwoofers, I get something like 12, 12 feet, uh, 2 inches roughly to each of the subwoofers. It's recording it here is 15 and a half. I get something more akin, I think also to 12-ish feet to my fronts. And these are all real short. It's, it's got the front set to about six feet, half, half the distance that they really are. Actually, all the speakers in terms of these distance calculations are way smaller than they are in reality. But distance in calibration software isn't really meant to be true feet 
in distance and in inches and whatnot, right? It's meant to be a delay calculation and delay can be influenced by a number of factors and affected by your room and so on. So obviously, I guess sound is hitting the listening position out of these speakers um, in a way faster or, or being picked up faster than, than the stock measured distance would indicate. So for now, I'm going to trust these. I hope the software is not you know, not wrong in, um, in its sense. But again, all of these speaker distances real short relative to physical distance, but the subwoofer is longer actually relative to physical distance. So there's my levels, um, pretty akin to what I ha had gotten before. And again, this is why I don't want to turn the subwoofers down because the calculated trim levels for the subwoofers are within a couple of dB of zero. If I had gone over to my subwoofer and turned it down by 8 dB, ARC would have just ended up needing to turn it back up and you're getting like that push-pull, just totally inefficient structure. So I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. Uh, the trims on my mains up around 9 dB, that's, that's akin to what I was getting before. Feels like it's applying a little more of a volume boost to the surrounds and the backs than it was before and maybe actually reducing the tops a little bit. So there's definitely some differences in the calculations and such going on here. So here's the phase control results. Um, so in this case, phase frequency for both of my subs was still 80, but it did move the phase of subwoofer one to 180 degrees and subwoofer two to 75. Interesting. So I would have had these basically at zero, essentially no change from default before through its through its measurements and its sequences, ARC obviously figured out that, oh, we wanna, we wanna change these values. And then of course, all my crossovers, almost universally 80, they had all been 80 before out of my prior Genesis runs. Interestingly, this time we've got the front in ceiling crossover coming in at 90, 90 instead of 80. Uh, let's see, no changes relative to the inputs. It did go ahead and uh, Genesis or ARC Correction is enabled for all of the inputs um, as usual, and that profile one is selected. I really love this feature uh, of the Anthem products, being able to turn that on and off or pick the specific profile that you're looking for. So that's all good. Again, no changes really on the network configuration, nor on the final, uh, final page there. So there we go. I need to give this thing a serious listen. And I'm, I'm curious to see what, with, with the additional information, right, how much better it can actually get. All right, so I did go ahead and check it just to be sure. I made three profiles in my art config, all off of the same one measurement, R and all subs uh, in the one measurement. I did a, a default curve, default Anthem settings profile. I did another one that I called flat, where I did kind of the usual correction that I've been doing, which is to make all the speakers correct out to 20K instead of 5K. I talked about that in my prior video. And, and added my little bit of tilt, the, the 1 dB tilt for the high frequencies. And then I made a third one called Arn Boost, which is trying to add some more uh, of the lower bass impact. Now I had been doing that with the deep bass boost and some of the prior comments and feedback that I had suggested, well, maybe you should try the room correction or the room gain setting rather than the deep, deep bass boost. So I'm gonna try that this time. So in this profile, I basically added 3 dB to the to the room game, uh, the room gain setting, and added a little bit extra to the to the speaker level trims on both of the subwoofers. So three profiles, did the calculations, got to the final screen, gave the option again to to do the phase correction measurements and such, and it does in fact measure every subwoofer for every profile. So if you break it down, it takes seems to take roughly about two minutes to do phase correction for one subwoofer. So I have two subs, that's four minutes per profile times three profiles. And, and it did calculate separate values for each sub and each phase setting for each profile. And once the phase correction, all the measurements were done, the totality of all of those measurements, both subs across all three profiles, it updated the settings in the Anthem and there are in fact uh, different phase results for each of the profiles based on the curves and the measurements and such being applied. So be aware, I guess, if you're changing things in your uh, config, um, changing your target curve, changing some settings, playing around, experimenting with different profiles, after you upload 
if you recalculate and you re-upload, you will, I guess, need to run phase correction every single time and let that tweak those settings in order them in order for them to be correct against your against your changes. So pretty cool. I'm very eager to to get a listen to this thing, and I really like seeing these features. For me, I know a lot of folks get really into it. They, they get their mini DSPs, they have these room corrections, and they still do REW and all this other stuff. I think that's more than I, I want to put in. I want to just kind of trust a, a good product, a good piece of software, and a good system, and be happy with that. So um, nice to see this doing more, eager to, eager to give it a listen, and, and have it be pretty turnkey. This is about the limit of how much time I really want to spend in there kind of tweaking stuff like this. And so I'm, again, happy overall with the Anthem product, what they're doing with it. This really, really makes me further want to get Anthem processing and arc room correction in the living room. Cheapest way to do that, just pick up an MRX 540, use it as a preamp, and then mix my stuff together with the AVM 70 and the MRX where I need to to share sources in Zone 2, run some other things discreetly. But in any case, stick with the channel. I'll be covering that and talking about that in the week's and such a head. So if you have questions about this stuff, about the new updates and, and, and what I've been doing with them, anything that I've learned, please post in the comments. If you find me doing something wrong, sound off as well with tact, please. I'm eager to learn from you if you've observed something or you understand something or you know something about uh, this update and all the stuff that I don't. Let me know. I, I, I want to learn and uh, and so share your knowledge and let's, let's discuss. Let me know how you're setting up your your settings and your room cal and, and all of that so as always please like and subscribe look down in the description for some ways to support the channel and thanks for watching